Hola, buenas noches. Bienvenidos a En Casa con la Plaza. Good evening. Welcome to En Casa con la Plaza. My name is Abelardo de la Peña Jr. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications here at, well, not here. I'm at home right now, but at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. Uh, these uh, En Casa sessions have been taking place since uh, almost two years, April of 2020. Uh, we try to bring you the best of our, of our, of our community, culture, history, art. Uh, from our home to yours or wherever you're at right now. Uh, presentations, demonstrations, conversations, and performances. Today we're going to have a, a great conversation and a presentation as well. If you're on Zoom, uh, you have the chat feature there. Uh, feel free, please, like Gerard Meraz. He's telling us that he's here. He's saying hola, so hola uh, to Gerard and to Carmen Reynaga as well. If you're on Facebook, please use the chat, the comment feature to do the same. Let us know where you're viewing from. Say hello to me, say hello to Harry. We much appreciate the interactivity. We'll also take questions if you if you have any to post to either one of us, uh, please do so. Uh, we'll take them during uh, or after the, the presentation and the conversation. I'd like to thank our sponsors here at the end of March, almost the last day of March, Union Pacific Foundation and the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you that La Plaza has been open since the last year. Uh, we're open every day except Tuesday from noon to five on weekday, weekdays and from 10 to five on weekends. La Tienda gift store is also open. All of, it, all of our galleries are open as well, including our permanent exhibitions. LA starts here. Calle Principal, uh, the view from here. Uh, the, our two temporary exhibitions have been open now. One is called Patriotism and Conflict, Fighting for Country y Comunidad, uh, a, a really insightful look at the moratorium uh, before, after, as well as Latinos who served in the military. And then finally, a couple weekends ago, we opened LA Memo Chicana, Chicano Art from 1972 to 1989. We'll be discussing that in, in part uh, during this uh, this presentation. La Cocina, our museum and teaching kitchen dedicated to Mexican cuisine is also open Monday through Friday, 12 to 5. The inaugural uh, exhibition, Maiz, Past, Present and Future, is a tribute to the cuisine's most essential ingredient. We'll be changing hours in a couple of weeks, going from, um, from Wednesday through Sunday from 12 to 5. Uh, we're right across the street from La Plaza at 555 North North Spring Street, yeah, so uh, also free admission. Uh, let's see, other things, this Wednesday, I mean Saturday, we're having a, a memorial uh, commemoration of the late Congressman Esteban Torres, family day coming up in uh, on April 24th, but you could find out all about this on our website, lapca.org. So let me introduce our our guest of honor tonight, Harry Gamboa Jr. He's the director of the photo media program at Cal Arts, co-founder of ASCO, the LA-based performance group, and founder and director of the international performance troupe called Virtual Verite. His photography has been exhibited and or collected nationally, internationally, and featured in the LA Times, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Freeze, Aperture, USA Today, and much, much more. He's author of uh, Lennox, A Colorful Place to Land, Urban Exile, Collective Writings of Harry Gamboa Jr. And most recently, it was announced that Gael Garcia Bernal and Diego Luna are teaming up with LA and Miami-based Exile content to produce Travis Gutierrez Sanger's documentary, Asco, Without Permission. So let's bring on Harry Gamboa Jr. Please join us, Harry. Okay. Hi. How are you doing, Abelardo? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Well, I think I'm. Um, it's pretty good to be back on the electric chair. So here we go. <laughs> You've been doing a lot of virtual re recently, haven't you, Harry? Yeah, I think uh, when uh, uh, the pandemic hit, uh, I had never actually used Zoom before. And then uh, someone brought a big tube of uh, crazy glue, and I've been in place probably ever since. So I'm, uh, I'm virtual, I'm actual um and normally simply just conceptual all right well we're going to talk just a little bit about our most recent exhibit there at, at la plaza de cultura y artes it's la memo uh chicana chicano artists from 1972 to 1989 and includes three of your images and we could uh, maybe you'll, you'll be including them in your presentation but 
you were live and in person just a couple weekends ago. Uh, I'm going to share screen here just to showcase some of the images that were taken uh, at the reception. This is on our Facebook page. You could catch it at LA at La Plaza LA. That's uh, Facebook.com La Plaza LA. So, so tell us who who's here with you in, in this photograph, Harry. Well, uh, here is uh, John Paul Arciniega, a former uh, uh, recent graduate from CalArts. Um, and um, recently been accepted to numerous universities to go to his uh, graduate school, so it's really great. And uh, here's um, uh, Gerard Maras, uh, a faculty member at um, Chicano Studies at uh, Cal State um, University at Northridge. So oh, well, long, I definitely... Longtime long friend, and uh, actually, uh, 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 John Paul will be participating in my upcoming photo shoot um, for a project I've been working on uh, for the last... Uh, few months uh, called um, uh, uh, Cruzada's Intuition, kind of based on um, a series of hallucinations um, intermixed uh, with reality. So Incredible. Well, you, you're you constantly creating. Uh, we could catch your, your work on, on Instagram. Uh, also, you have a, a website going on. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. For now, please. Uh, you have a presentation that you set up especially for us here at En Casa con la Plaza. So, so let's uh, let's get to it. Thank you. So, so, yeah, maybe I'd like to just mention a few things. So, um, the show LA Memo, uh, of course, is being uh, curated by Rafael Martinez. Uh, 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 these are works that were uh, selected from the uh, Ultimate uh, Art Collection, uh, which. Uh, some of my work was acquired for that. I'm very happy for that. And, and this is under the direction of Susanna Smith Bautista. And um, I feel that uh, this particular exhibition is, is absolutely important in that it brought together so many uh, Chicana and Chicano artists together. And I'm feeling that um, the last time there were so many incredible names put together and works was probably uh, in the 1990s uh, during the Cata exhibition. So um, uh, again, uh, uh, some of the museums, local museums have been picking up the pace slightly here and there, a show or two, and, uh, but to really feature sort of the broad spectrum of, um, of the, the works by Chicano, Chicano artists since the 1970s, um, uh, you know, it's 50 years, 50 years worth of, of, of material. And, um, uh, and it's, uh, you know, really a good, Good to know that uh, we have new scholars and uh, professionals really taking the work into consideration. Um, uh, I'm also showing uh, in, in San Bernardino in a show called um, uh, Where the Rubber Meets the Road, um, curated by uh, Javier Casares Cortez. And there I'm showing a, a, a new exhibition, a new video called Tunnel. It's only a four minute video that um, features uh, Javier and Anais Franco, uh, also a recent graduate from CalArts, um, performing in a sort of a neo-noir uh, video moment. Um, and uh, I just want to make sure you're still there. Uh, uh, Abelardo, yes, you're here? Oh, yes, I, I'm here. I'm just, I'm, just... Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not wearing my glasses. So I'm not sure if you were handing me a corsage <laughs> that I have to wear. So, no, no. <laughs> OK. And, um, and then uh, just one more thing. Uh, uh, I was surprised when uh, my wife, Barbara Carrasco, um, went with some friends recently to the, the Hammer. I was unaware that they would be screening one of my very early uh, videos from the Osco era, by the way, um, uh, titled uh, No Supper in the Ulysses Jenkins exhibition. And, it's, uh, and it features um, Barbara, Umberto, Sandoval, one of the original members of Osco, and my son, Diego, when he was a young boy. Uh, and it's a very... Um, very uh, 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 satirical and Dadaist uh, video uh, portrayal of a family um, undergoing uh, deconstruction. So it's, uh, and so uh, I've actually never seen it projected. I'm looking forward to going to see the show, but I, I'm looking, I, I would like to actually share some images so I can talk about. Uh, let's sure. See can, let's well, see if we could. Okay, so we before can. we get, Harry, where can we find out all about the, these exhibitions that you're part of all uh... um, actually on my on my Instagram I guess uh, it's uh, kind of very low key but it's just images that are there so you, you can see some of the more recent photographic work uh, in for particularly um, in the uh, Cruzada's intuition um, 
the current the current group of people I'm working with, believe it or not, are actually some are former members of OSCO, people who were connected to OSCO, and some who were connected to uh, Virtual Verite. At this moment, I have kind of a an untitled uh, group of people. Um, uh, early on, and, and of course in my life, I grew up in East LA and was uh, raised in Boyle Heights. Um, my experience primarily was uh, directly Chicano. Um, and, uh, and I guess maybe, and this would have been the first half of my life, uh, the works were really specifically uh, involved in documenting and interpreting a contemporary urban Chicano life. And, um, and after that point uh, uh, with uh, basically traveling and working and meeting many people, I have now broadened uh, the scope, particularly with Los Angeles being such a multicultural uh, city, probably the most multicultural environment. Um, uh, many of my performers are, are, are international, uh, 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 people I work with, uh, I've, I've worked with people in uh, Belgium, Germany, Sweden, uh, Finland, um, and Mexico, of course, and all throughout the United States, uh, and, and as well as all of France and, and the UK. And so many of the people when I go and have worked over there, and when they're here, I either meet them as students or other co-workers. Um, and so I'm currently working on my project, Cruzada's Intuition, also working with my sister, Linda Gamboa. Um, and, and she's basically uh, the pivotal figure in this. Um, and um, working with about a hundred performers uh, that uh, eventually, uh, hopefully will become a book and in some future date, uh, maybe a museum exhibition uh, and, uh, and again, some of the images will be included here in black and white. Um, uh, the work also, the photographic work uh, began early on in the 70s as, um, as a film-based uh, kind of photography. Um, I actually have recently written a, 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 some, some, some essays for an organization that operates out of the Netherlands that's funded through Canada, uh, titled Arts Everywhere. Um, if you go to my website that's connected to uh, my Instagram at the top, you can actually read those stories. But one of the stories, um, and I, actually I responded to two questions. One was, how did I learn to read and write? And in that you get the horrific tale of growing up in East LA the way I did. And then the other one uh, is, uh, how, did I, how did I ever get around to taking photographs? Which was probably equally as horrific and beautiful simultaneously. And so, um, uh, and so but, uh, currently, I'm working in the, in digital and film, also, and uh, so the the work uh, kind of spans the entire spectrum of um, of production methodology, and also distribution and the the way it incorporates uh, print media, actual printed photographs, silver based print, and um, and digital prints, of course, but also in book form and uh, primarily to be introduced into the mass media as was recently um, OSCO, for instance, uh, uh, was featured um, broadly in the uh, uh, last month's issue of Freeze Magazine, International Freeze. And, and that, uh, that work, when it was originally shot, uh, um, did, existed only as slides, 35 millimeter slides. Uh, those works only existed as, um, as little tiny little objects that were projected. They were designed to be projected and did not become did not become manifest as objects until the presentation, uh, and again, sort of as, in a very awkward form, um, an exhibition at the Centre Pompidou, and then later at the uh, 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 Phantom Sightings exhibition at LACMA, and then again at the OSCO exhibition was where many many other photographs finally appeared as actual printed works, of which many will probably never be seen again. Um, and uh, uh, however, um, uh, the, the works, once they became printed, took on a different trajectory. And so again, all of these things are, are, are uh, sort of the viewing experience, but also the relationship to society, uh, to the economy, um, to uh, transnationalism, uh, as well as a reflection of, of, of contemporary Chicano society as it's growing. Uh, growing from the 20th century into the 21st century. So I was talking with a friend of mine the other day that um, when I was growing up, I was very, uh, I was kind of a, uh, uh, a kid that I, I, 
I actually nearly never attended school at all. I, it's wi widely known that my GPA was 0.0, um, and which is true. Um, but my the wealth of my education came from uh, mentors and meeting people and being sort of a brave little guy out in the streets and visiting people and seeking people out. And so many times I would talk to people who would tell me about things that had happened 50 years before, 60 years before. And some of these people had uh, lived through the Mexican Revolution, had lived through the Zoot Suit Riots, had lived through World War II, World, uh, the Korean War. Um, I got a chance to meet many, many different kinds of people uh, that were involved in Hollywood and in various movements, including Ban the Bomb Movement, people that were desperately seeking to cease all nuclear tests. Um, and, um, and so I, and I had sort of a, a propensity to learn uh, to read and write fairly well and to speak. And uh, my early years uh, were actually capped off with the East LA walkouts, uh, followed by um, denunciation by Richard Nixon, um, and then followed actually by awards from, uh, believe it or not, Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. I never voted for him, but he did give me a, 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 a National Endowment for the Arts. I received uh, two National Endowment for the Arts early on. And this positioned me as being a representative of the United States as an artist. Um, and uh, so I have always uh, been very engaged in um, promoting Chicano culture throughout, our, throughout this country and internationally, and I still do. And, uh, and I feel that um, uh, our people are, are um, often neglected, omitted. Um, however, um, we are, uh, and we have proven ourselves to be quite um, resilient and brave and brilliant and productive. And, um, and which is why I'm so happy uh, that the work from Ultimate is currently exhibited at your work because uh, most of these works have been created outside of the art market and, uh, and, and not actually co-valued as other works of art should be <clears throat> and, um, or could be. And so uh, you have many people who have lived their entire lives being artists. Um, and uh, and uh, I would have to say in any other culture, I think that every single person would probably get a medal for having to um, uh, undergone such harsh treatment uh, in many different ways, and yet to persist and produce such beautiful works that really encapsulate and uh, project a sense not only of pride, uh, but a sense of, um, of worth, self-worth, and, uh, and an insistence, an insistence that we are, are co-equal and that we are uh, uh, more, than, more than even co-equal, co that we produce under duress and we succeed uh, irregardless of whether we are included or not. And, uh, and so, and, and this is really uh, growing as an understanding of who we are. And, and I, I continue to persist in the term Chicano. Um, uh, I was part of the group that actually helped to initiate the usage of the word. And uh, in other terminologies, of course, might apply to other people, uh, but, um, but I feel that the term Chicano uh, was earned in blood on the streets of East LA and throughout uh, uh, the various wars. And so um, I uh, will probably uh, continue to use this term. And I don't know, uh, uh, Abelard, would you like me to show some words? Yeah, yeah please do. Uh, just a question I have, uh, Harry, when do you sleep? When does your mind, your brain, oh. your creativity sleep? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm not really too sure. I'm, uh, I live mostly in some kind of uh, dream, uh, Dream, dream state. Usually, um, uh, you know, I, I do get my eight-hour sleep, but it's here and there. Okay, so it, it's all a matter of making things work out very well. So, um, uh, but yeah, I'm 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 pretty busy usually, and always have been. So here, we'll 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 check out a couple of these images, I guess. Um, let's hopefully this thing behaves itself. This is uh, <laughs> this is Zoom, so we'll we'll see if this works. Oh, here, hang on. Actually, it's already behaving badly here. So um, really quickly, um, this image is, um, and of course you could see it, Abelardo, please. Yes, I can, okay. yes. And take so, your time, take your time. You don't have to rush through this. Okay, so um, this piece was featured actually recently in, in, uh, in Freeze and, um, and of course the various, um, uh, OSCO is kind of an interesting uh, group. It, uh, it, it was actually never a collective. We were not a collective. We were definitely a group. 
we were very much individualized. We were very responsible for our own participation, our own creations. We did come together from time to time to produce. Um, of course, the narrative has grown over time uh, with various people writing, uh, but the lived experience was that we were not a group. Um, and uh, um, this, uh, this piece is, I think, would probably be considered to be the first um, self-generated uh, 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 artwork that would reach out into the public. Um, this is called Spray Paint LACMA. This was in 1972. This was a result of, um, at that time I was 21 years of age, I'm 70 today. So um, at, at that point, of course, I was uh, overwhelmed with, um, oh, I don't know, hormones, ideas, and all kinds of things. Uh, um, the thing was, at, by 1972, I had already experienced a number of very deadly encounters um, uh, that took place in the streets of East LA, the East LA walkouts, the Chicano moratorium had, 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 had already taken place. Uh, many of many, many of my friends uh, had been lost to the Vietnam War and other of the other kinds of things that uh, harm people during that era, including exposure to nuclear radiation fallout from all the nuclear tests of the 1950s and 1960s. Um, and so uh, at this point in time, it was, um, very difficult to foresee any future in art, uh, particularly after having taken a friend earlier that same uh, uh, that day to LACMA to look at all the artwork. Um, and after looking at throughout the entire museum, there wasn't a single work of Chicano art or, or anything reflective of Mexican uh, heritage at all in that museum. I uh, started pounding on doors. And of course, that's your title for this piece here. Um, at that point, the pounding on a museum door was one of my least worries. Um, I managed to actually locate the lead curator and asked him why uh, there was no Chicano art. And of course, he was rather flippant, um, probably deservedly so. He had a really good position, a very nice office with plush carpeting. And he was pouring himself a martini when he turned to me and he says, well, you know, Chicanos uh, don't make art, they're in gangs. And then he turned around, took a sip, and I took a look at him and I said, well, I'll be back. Uh, and I did, I did return uh, later that evening uh, with um, uh, Grunk and Willie Heron. I had, I had invited Patsy, she was unable to attend. Um, and, uh, and, we, and I decided that uh, we would uh, uh, spray paint the lower right hand of the museum, right hand corner of the museum, thus creating the museum, the first work of art to be exhibited at the museum. I came back and picked up Patsy Valdez early the next morning, drove her back to photograph her um, at the site, uh, minutes later, the 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 paint the, the spray paint on the wall was whitewashed uh, by the janitorial staff. Back then, it was a custodial problem. Today, if three young artists were to do such a thing, it would be construed as being three uh, 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 felonies. And of course, this is a three strikes law. All of us would still be in prison. Okay, so I think instead of uh, who knows what what we'd be doing at this point, uh, you know, counting our days, uh, but. Um, but uh, uh, so this image, um, uh, this also got me into the start of, again, what resulted was a single 35 millimeter slide. Um, and uh, I made duplicate slides. I wrote some copy. I, I then duplicated that copy. And I must have sent uh, maybe 300 slides uh, to various individuals around the world. This was before there was any internet. Uh, sending it to scholars, editors, actors, other people who seemed to pop up in, in my awareness at that time, uh, all around the world, and uh, never expecting to hear from anyone. But the idea was almost like sending a note in a bottle in the ocean, uh, tossing it out, seeing if there'd be any feedback, which there wasn't for many, many years. Uh, but this sort of became the, the, the practice that I maintained for many of the works. I would always send things out. I would always reproduce things. Um, but it was not a, an actual photograph um, until the Phantom Sightings Exhibition. So, uh, and this would have been uh, maybe 12, 13, 14 years ago. And this photograph was then printed and actually exhibited inside the museum. So also on that day, the Orange County Register, uh, I believe wrote some op-ed that probably I should be arrested for having uh, defaced the museum. They were a little too late. Um, uh, 
This image here is called Instant Mural. Um, uh, again, this is sort of a very ephemeral um, uh, action piece. Um, and so uh, 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 one, of the, one of the ideas of OSCO performances in the 1970s was that they should take place where um, there had been uh, mass killings by police or other kinds of violence uh, by oppression uh, during that era. Um, and of course, many of these sites are, are highly documented. Um, so this would have been the intersection of Whittier Boulevard in Arizona, where many terrible things took place in the, the year of 1970, 1971, uh, and maybe even in 1968. Um, the idea that was that as OSCO, we would go, and, and I'm not sure if you're aware of this, uh, Abelardo, but to some extent, there was an un undeclared but yet widely understood form of marsh, localized martial law uh, in this era, area where it was very dangerous for young people to, um, to hang out in the streets together uh, because of uh, the response to the political activity that had taken place during that, those years. And so, um, and so we were told that we couldn't do things. And of course, I've always gone to exactly where I'm told I can't go. And so the, the thing was, was that we would create these performances, uh, but um, to take a photograph takes only one one thousandth of a second. And many of the performances actually lasted uh, probably less than a minute um, the, with the idea that uh, they would exist in media, they would be distributed in media and persist over time. We would uh, invoke the, the concepts of Albert Einstein here. And, um, and so, uh, so here we have uh, Grunk taping Patsy, Valdez, and he also taped Umberto Sandoval to the wall. Uh, the performance lasted as long as it took for the tape to unroll. And, uh, and of course, very low tack tape. The idea was that um, quite often when people are oppressed, the mechanisms of oppression are actually very weak and dependent on the oppressed to agree to be oppressed. Uh, in the end, uh, they pulled away, walked away, and better yet, they look fashionable. And so the idea was that whenever we did things, and, and again, this sort of was a Chicano response to oppression, is that if you're going to try to damage my day, I'm going to look better than you. And, uh, and if you think I'm, uh, I'm supposed to feel sad, well, I'm going to laugh in your face. And if you think you're hurting me, uh, I'm going to ask for more. And, uh, and, and in fact, I'm going to show you how to transform pain into art. And, uh, and in the end, I'm going to be the one that's going to tell the story better than you. And so, and, and that, that, that's, of course, has uh, been the driving force uh, throughout. Um, this piece, for instance, is called um, uh, First Supper After a Major Riot. And of course, I believe uh, maybe you've seen it on the second floor there. Um, um, this, uh, this work involves uh, Patsy Valdez, Humberto Sandoval, Willie Heron, and Grunk. Uh, having a party, um, actually in a location where I was standing when uh, numerous uh, uh, sheriff deputies opened fire on a group of peaceful protesters in 1971, on January 31st, 1971, uh, in which many people were injured. Um, uh, the newspapers claim only one individual was killed, uh, but um, uh, shortly afterwards, the entire area was dug up, repaved, all the evidence was gone. Um, but I felt that this would have been a very important place to do a work of art to undo that uh, that uh, uh, narrative of horror, that narrative of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of extermination, uh, and instead uh, to turn it into something that is a satirical, fun, laughing, enjoying, absurdist, um, and uh, and again uh, somewhat hallucinatory in the midst of uh, what other Hollywood uh, would, would dare to refer to as sort of uh, uh, in, their, in their stereotypical uh, narratives of what East LA was uh, and still is, it's just a cool place, you know? And so, um, and, and of course that's not the way things are reflected. Uh, and so um, here also is another piece. Um, you know, all of these works, by the way, the ones that I've shown you so far have been shown in major museums throughout uh, Europe. Uh, last year at the Ludwig Museum in Cologne, Germany, uh, also at the Pompidou. Uh, these have been shown at the, at the Beas Artes, 
at LACMA, and, and some of them have been shown at the Whitney Museum, uh, as well as the Smithsonian um, uh, Museum of American Art, um, as well as many uh, other smaller museums, and, and, are also in, and, and some are also included in the collection of MOCA also. Uh, so these were, and, and, and all these works have been reproduced numerous times and many books have been cited in probably a, more than a thousand uh, documents um, and, and have been introduced into the American um, uh, art canon as well as the international canon. So uh, the first uh, response to all of these works primarily has been European and Mexican. And, uh, and Mexico, uh, Mexico City, my, my relationship to Mexico City, of course, is that my grandfather's uh, going way back numerous generations. Um, uh, uh, yet my involvement with Mexican museums goes back to the, around this time period where uh, the museums were the first to recognize my photography there. And so I've had an ongoing relationship uh, with the museums uh, of Mexico City uh, for quite some time and, and Europe actually probably longer than here in the US. And so this piece is called The Gores. Um, and this is sort of a narrative. We did a whole series of works where um, we'd have these uh, individuals um, sort of, these were kind of even pre-punk, but very fashionable um, uh, individuals would go out and uh, issue street justice uh, and take care of people who were committing petty crimes. Uh, these, of course, these events would take place. They were very, they, were, they would take less than a minute uh, to, to actually, um, uh, I would direct everyone, photograph them, stage it. And the objects were often left behind. And uh, this camera, uh, this is probably the last time this camera appeared in anything, but it was finally left behind. And I heard it was finally turned into a piñata. Some little kid beat the hell out of it and, uh, and it disappeared. Uh, but uh, everything else, normally all the clothing, all the materials, wherever we would do these works, we would leave all the evidentiary material behind and then leave and actually leave nearly naked, I, I guess, uh, many times. And so the idea was that we would leave it as though it was a scene of the crime, but actually it was a scene of the art. And so, uh, and so this, of course, uh, would generate a myth. And Osco, of course, was known for generating myth. And we're in a land of... Um, of uh, Mirage, we're the land of myth making, we're the land of storytelling. Uh, we're, we're actually uh, in the countering uh, what's known as the dream machine slash war machine. And so the idea is um, uh, uh, as OSCO, we were doing different things. And, and I must mention that um, during this period of time, we were all draft age uh, male Chicanos um, of which everyone here had their own different trajectory and story and relation to the war. Um, I was a very dedicated anti-war activist and I was very fortunate um, to have received a student deferment and uh, the others had their own way by which they did not have to go to war. Uh, but again, I um, do honor all my, all my um, uh, uh, friends who uh, either unfortunately passed away during this war, uh, but also those that, uh, that served there and all the other uh, you know, my son was actually in the Navy for, for many, many years. Um, and of course, um, again, even people who are in the military are overlooked by the media, as, uh, as we've seen on some of the PBS specials, where um, it's, it's the World War I, World War II, Korean War, and the Vietnam War, as well as all the current wars, seem as though Chicanos were never there. And, and of course, that is a complete falsehood. And so, um, and so for that, I will, um, uh, um, you know, I don't want to mention the previous president's name, but he's such a disgusting fascist. Um, uh, it's a miracle that uh, uh, he has the nerve to say a single thing uh, regarding Mexicans at all. Um, here we go. Um, this, this image, by the way, uh, also in a way really highlights Osco. I'm going to kind of go really quickly through Osco now after this. Um, this was called Alamode. The idea was that uh, uh, we kind of uh, were, uh, I was very much influenced by the Pachucos, uh, the Pachucos, and there's a big story about the Pachucos. Of course, they emerged out of El Paso, Texas. They were influenced by the Mexican Revolution and the internationalism uh, of the population that arrived in El Paso during the Mexican Revolution, as well as the fashion and the introduction of the various forms of media, inclu including cinema and photography. And, uh, and basically the idea to look beautiful 
beautiful in the face of death, beautiful in the face of violence, beautiful just simply because you wake up in the morning and the idea uh, of also being beautiful when you're, you're po in poverty. And so, uh, and so we would often uh, create scenes um, to kind of portray this. Uh, this is what you probably should have seen on the cover of Vogue magazine in 1974. But of course it wasn't there, it's still not there. Uh, and of course this photograph was taken on the tabletop at Philippe's in downtown LA, a block away from where you're at. Yeah. And so, um, uh, but this photograph has then again gone on to be declared sort of a foremost portraiture, you name it. Uh, uh, this is actually in the collection of, of the Smithsonian and a few other uh, locations. Um, and, um, and so, um, I'll just go here also from the, that particular era. And uh, this of course is called Iris Crisis. Uh, and this is exhibited currently in LA Memo. And, uh, and I must mention that uh, I was really surprised uh, when uh, Ultimate selected this work. Uh, it had actually never been revealed and shown to anyone. And, and let alone, this is the first time it's, uh, so this is the premiere exhibition of this work. Um, this would have been from 1982. Um, uh, and in this work, I would have to say is probably the most widely recognized uh, photograph that I've taken. And of course, all of these are my photographs uh, from the OSCO era. This is called Decoy Gang War Victim. Um, this piece was in response to uh, the negative stereotypes and the promotion of violence against Chicanos by, by the existing two major newspapers in, of that era, during that era, which would have been the LA Times that was run by the Chandlers. And of course the, uh, uh, the Herald Examiner, um, and I'm just uh, by Hearst, um, that had decided that after the Chicano moratorium, they would turn their attention and create this uh, artificial wave of gang activity and gang violence, promoting gang violence, and, and defining East LA and Chicanos as being only gangs, which of course, as we all know, is not true. And, uh, and so, but uh, if, you, if you look back, if you can ever actually access uh, newspapers from this particular era, which is very difficult to, to find because of the yellow journalism that was occurring during this period of time, um, you'll see that uh, if any violence occurred in any of the neighborhoods, they would often uh, list the names, the addresses, the names of the family members, where they worked, where they lived, where they had lunch, what their driver's license numbers were, their car numbers. And then that was providing sort of a roadmap to the next person that would receive violence back and forth. And it just seemed very obvious to me. And we also had sort of a very right wing uh, proponent, anti-Mexican proponent by the name of George Putnam, who was widely seen on local television, um, who really decidedly uh, would, uh, would verbally attack a uh, Chicano activist by name, um, someone who, who recently passed away, uh, a, a longtime friend and activist, John Ortiz, who passed away several years ago, uh, was one of his favorites, and as well as some of the members of the Brown Berets and other people. Um, however, um, I, I came up with the idea that, uh, you know, there's gotta be a way to uh, throw a monkey wrench into this machine and so what I decided to do was come by and uh, set some road flares, put up some lights. At that time, they were illuminating the streets using mercury vapor lamps in minority areas. And I'm, I believe I read somewhere that these lights emitted a very dangerous wavelength that would affect skin. <clears throat> anyway, it, I was using during that era and uh, because I was uh, always a cinephile and I knew quite a bit about uh, the production of film, um, and because fortunately living in near Hollywood, I was able to access a particular kind of film stock known as Ektachrome 400 professional stock. It was the exact same kind of film that was used in any of the major blockbuster films. Um, and, uh, and so my motive in photographing the works of, um, of the Oscar era was, and of course this is where the, the term no movie comes from, was that, um, that whenever I saw a movie, I'd walk away and only remember the moment. And of course, films are, are projected still, film, still images. And I was not about to spend my entire life trying to raise millions of dollars. I'd rather produce hundreds and hundreds or more images um, uh, that would be the image that you would remember uh, as opposed to seeing the film. And that would insinuate or, in, or uh, that there was 
a preceding and succeeding moment uh, that there was a narrative to this. And actually with this particular image, uh, the idea was that I had photographed the, the last gang member to ever be killed in East LA. When this slide was uh, done and I selected this particular image, I made numerous uh, copies of this slide I then uh, got a haircut, got dressed in a suit, got a briefcase, played the part. I went for, for many local stations between San Diego and Santa Barbara. Uh, back then when they showed the news, it was very much like they do on uh, various TV shows where they just show a slide and they do a talking head. So this image was actually screened on television as being the last gang member. Um, there was a, an exhibition called Global Conceptualism at the Queens Museum that declared this piece to be one of the most um, uh, uh, highlighted forms of conceptual performance of the 20th century. This piece then went on to uh, serve as the cover image for Art Forum, also an international magazine. So um, my friends in Europe, my friends in Iceland, my friends in Mexico and Argentina and Japan uh, um, were able to, to purchase this image and this image continues to persist. This image is also, this photograph is actually in the collection of, 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 of Ultimate, of Mocha, of, um, of uh, the Whitney, and as well as uh, uh, the museum, uh, the Smithsonian Museum of American Art. And of course has uh, been on the cover of, uh, of books by Amelia Jones and has been, uh, has been discussed in many uh, PhD dissertations and become sort of an iconic image of, of that era but we are now in the 21st century. So um, leading to the 21st century, and here we are. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know, Abelardo, how much more time do I have? You could let oh, me yeah. I could talk take, for, take, yeah. take as long as you want. Okay, so, this is fascinating, and I, okay. I'm just so happy that you're here with us tonight. So, so please continue. So um, Osco, um, uh, had a, a duration from 1972 through 1985. However, um, you know, there are other people, um, you know, it's really great. When the Oscar was happening, there was really very few people paying attention. It was obscure, um, uh, 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 you know, um, I had to wait for people to be born, go through the university to then focus their attention to work on their PhDs to kind of explain what we were doing in a form that could be understood by mainstream American and international audiences. Um, that's kind of what happened by the time uh, uh, at the end of the 20th century, um, got a chance to meet, it was very, I was very fortunate to meet many, many brilliant, uh, very young scholars. Um, I'll just mention that I did have a chance to meet uh, Ramon Garcia, uh, Rita Gonzalez, Chon Noriega, and Dean Chavoya, a handful of other people, uh, uh, Richard T. Rodriguez, um, in their early uh, years, and yet um, recognize that uh, uh, that uh, that they would have sort of a very uh, formal education, and yet be in control of um, of generating a, a a different spin on the narrative, a scholarly spin that would then influence others. It was really important to have these voices as well as to have uh, journalists um, that would then join in. Um, and, and some of them with even with a rocky start as it were. So for instance, uh, at the beginning of the 21st century, uh, uh, um, Carolina Miranda, uh, uh, Daniel Hernandez, uh, quite a number of other people uh, who have really focused in a way on some of the current work of the 21st century. Um, uh, um, the, the beginning of the 21st century uh, um, was a little bit rough. It was, uh, for me personally, there was a lot of challenges. As you know, um, uh, my wife, Barbara Carrasco, who was a very well-known uh, painter and artist, um, had uh, traveled uh, and done works throughout the Soviet Union, uh, had been exposed to Chernobyl, became very ill, uh, fortunately, and she became ill right after the birth of our daughter. Um, uh, the times with my son, uh, you know, for, uh, much earlier also, it was the idea that my son was having to deal with a young dad who had too much energy and uh, yet uh, uh, formulating uh, ideas and, and building. And so he, he probably had a little bit of fun in a way, but also tough fun. Uh, but my daughter also had tough fun 
uh, and all of us moving forward uh, to enter into the 21st century um, uh, a little bit stronger and, uh, and having a much clearer idea of what our trajectory was all about. And in me, the idea was that I would seek out individuals uh, to photograph who I feel are important, who I feel influence people, who I feel are um, show great dignity. Um, as I mentioned before, um, I'd started off primarily all Chicanos, uh, but of course I've, I've, I've broadened my scope. I'm, I've, I've understood that there are people from everywhere that I work with. Um, but for instance, uh, all of these individuals here um, have gone on to do things. And uh, for instance, on the right here, we have uh, a Caribbean Fragosa, uh, who I'd met as a recent graduate from CalArts, and now she's a well-known author. And of course, other people here and I don't think I can mention all the names of people, but I have worked, I have worked with more than, uh, you know, just even my Chicano Mail Unbonded series of which you also were photographed, uh, Abelardo proudly displaying your pager at the time, which was, uh, would have been high tech at the time. Um, but, um, um, you know, I, uh, even that has had about 150 people I've photographed, but in my performance troupe, uh, pretty close to 200 now. And so, um, um, this work, for instance, here, um, actually, uh, uh, there was a whole period of time when I was photographing people that seemed to be looking at some impending disaster. And this would have actually uh, coincided uh, maybe with um, uh, either response or, or presaging uh, the 9-11 uh, and as well as the, the wars and the, and the onset of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the obliteration of, uh, of, of civil rights uh, in the United States, as well as uh, uh, the introduction of, uh, of uh, biometric data collection and DNA theft, and as well as uh, uh, um, other kinds of things, uh, surveillance and all of this, where you know, we are now in a sort of a different era where we exist as data and we, uh, any one of our moves and, and motions and our bodies generate wealth for others. We are being usurped. We are being uh, sucked uh, dry in many different ways. And so it requires a different um, attitude. Um, but again, the attitude of, um, of, uh, of, of responding, posing, uh, virtual verite was known for being always kind of a, a, a scance, a kilter. Everyone's kind of always in a different angle um, as a counterbalance to the imbalance. And so the idea was to somehow uh, achieve um, uh, a level of, um, of control. Um, and so here again, uh, you have many different people who are here. Uh, Stephen Laponzi, who started off as a, as an, as a, as a scientist, who so then became an artist. Uh, Benjamin Quinones, Isabel Salazar, uh, Gala Porus Kim, and Calvin Lee, uh, all kind of very familiar names. Um, and of course, uh, and then here's from my, my series. So um, uh, this is the Chicano Mail and Bonded series and I'm only gonna show a few, but here is Louis Perez from Los Lobos. And uh, again, because I'm from East LA, um, I did get a chance to meet uh, many of the Los Lobos when we were all in high school. And I've known them ever since. And, uh, and I used to hang around with a lot of musicians and uh, you know, I had the, the, the pleasure of knowing uh, and meeting uh, these people and, and have been so happy for their success. But, um, uh, you know, um, here you have Louis um, uh, posing, um, graciously agreeing to participate here. Um, and here we have Esteban Torres, um, a congressman who recently passed away, who was very supportive of your organization, yes? Uh, La yes. Plaza. Yes. And of course, very important in introducing the idea of having a a museum on behalf of the of, of, of Latinos in Washington DC. And um, I encountered him in Miami Beach of all places. Um, I was having a conversation with Sean Noriega that day and we saw him um, nearby and I asked him and, uh, and it turns out of course I had met him much earlier uh, in my involvement in the Chicano movement. And of course I, um, during that whole period of time I got a chance to meet many people involved in the Democratic Party, including uh, Robert F. Kennedy um, I guess somewhere there's a photograph of me with him uh, when I was 15, and uh, but many other kind of labor leaders, political leaders, and future political leaders 
and future uh, representatives that would serve on the bench as judges um, and play major roles in, in the arts and in cinema and in business um, and even in the, uh, the creation of institutions. Um, so it's, it's been really great to witness. I am, I am someone who's completely unqualified to participate in any of this level, but my role has been to, um, and again, my understanding now, um, I create the material that becomes the primary materials for scholars. So I'm, you know, if I touch something, I make a mess, it's someone else's PhD. Uh, <laughs> if I actually create a finished product, well, then that gives a number of people something to argue about and someone else will write the book and then uh, someone will use it in their class and, uh, and it goes on and on and on. And so there is, um, I, I learned very early on that I am very much responsible with my ideas and my behavior. And my earliest behavior, as wild as it might have been, was probably and absolutely essential uh, to generating um, um, a lifetime of uh, being productive. And so, um, and so, yes, uh, I um, I don't apologize for any of it. I feel that it was absolutely uh, age uh, age specific, um, genuine energy that was required to make things move forward irregardless of the fact that I may not have had a good explanation. And, uh, and actually I'm still waiting to read someone's explanation for things I might've done. So here we have Willie Heron. Um, I've got to tell you, uh, Barbara Carrasco and I, my wife and I, we feel that Willie Heron is probably the foremost artist. Um, I know he's a, a, a very unique individual. I've known him for a long time. I, I consider him to be a very brave and strong individual. And, uh, and brilliant and, uh, and a genius actually. And so of course, uh, 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 and, uh, and he is quite unique. And uh, so, um, you know, uh, it's, it's always been a, a pleasure and an honor to know Willie. So um, going back uh, to a different project uh, with uh, Virtual Verite, um, I was once at a coffee shop and I, bumped into an artist, very, very highly regarded artist, uh, Steve Kino, um, who uh, explained that uh, he was about to receive a, 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 a commission to do a work for the new uh, bridge that has been, that is almost completed now, uh, expand, uh, going across the sixth street. Um, when I realized that at that moment, I had not heard that they were about to destroy and demolish the original Sixth Street Bridge. It occurred to me that that bridge had played a pivotal role in my life. I had gone across that bridge under various conditions. I probably had rolled down that bridge. I had crawled across that bridge. I'd run for my life across that bridge. I had danced across that bridge. I probably had kissed a few people on that bridge. I would probably fought with some people on that bridge. I walked with my father and my two brothers on that bridge, um, did many, many things on that bridge, uh, going from uh, East LA to um, downtown LA. I was always uh, uh, walking, uh, riding buses, riding streetcars. Um, but when it, they announced that they were about to uh, destroy this bridge, I, I took an interest in the bridge and then realized that of course, this bridge was built uh, right after um, uh, the depression, it would have been part of uh, uh, some of the uh, objects in the uh, would have been from the WPA. It would have been the idea that in LA at the beginning of the 20th century was this effort to de-Mexicanize Los Angeles architecturally, to introduce these artificially uh, designed uh, terms that would give you an Assyrian, uh, Egyptian, uh, Romanesque uh, kind of uh, landscape. Uh, the idea was to, to chip away uh, at the memory that any of it had ever been uh, Mexican. And of course, now we have a completely artificial Turk uh, from, from uh, all 100 square miles is completely artificially surfaced. All the plant life, all the animals are, are either imported, invasive, um, as, as well as the people. And so, um, and so the idea was that this bridge, nonetheless, had become very beloved uh, by the uh, community as being a link between uh, Boyle Heights and downtown LA. And uh, the whole announcement of the bridge being uh, destroyed was also a declaration of gentrification. And so, uh, so I decided that I would uh, call upon my performers uh, 
here again, again, many different kinds of people that I work with from various parts of the world, Japan, India, Iran, uh, Mexico, um, uh, Taipei, Taipei uh, the different places um, where um, I would have people doing different things with the bridge, interacting with the bridge, uh, functioning on the bridge as people normally do with the bridge. Um, here we have people dancing on the bridge. And of course, here's my daughter, Barbie. And also we have uh, 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 many other people. Um, actually, to the right is uh, Harry Liflon, who was at your recent opening, uh, also who I met when he was a young student uh, long ago. Um, and uh, uh, But here you have the, the bridge has already been dismantled. Um, and here, um, this is just probably the last image of the bridge um, that I'm going to show here. Um, is, a, is an image, and, and, and this is one of my uh, performers, Anna Garcia, who also uh, graduated from CalArts, who I had played repeated roles where she was uh, dressed in her quinceanera outfit, except she's 25 years old, and she had gotten lost for 10 years. She missed her own uh, quinceanera, except when she finally returned to the party, she's knowledgeable and has other things to say regar regarding uh, what the quinceanera might mean and what her role might be. And so she walked all across that bridge in her quinceanera outfit. And as she was walking, they were dismantling and removing the arches uh, of that bridge. And every single time I took photographs of performers on the bridge, there were less and less bridge. And finally, on the last day, I invited uh, Carolina Marana to show up. And she did write a very uh, important uh, essay for the LA Times um, when there was no more bridge, but there was all performers in the idea of the project serving as community building. And so, again, I, I will just continue really quickly here. Um, this, um, I did a series of, of photographs, portraits of people wearing masks uh, at the onset of, um, of uh, COVID, but this was during the demonstrations of the Black Lives Matter uh, protest. And as I was photographing people, two blocks away, people were being attacked and beaten. And actually one of my performers who showed up, showed up with fresh wounds and he still agreed to be photographed. Uh, that day, uh, people that were protesting for their rights. Um, and again, uh, the three individuals that are shown here in masks, um, all of them with the exception of Javier Cortez uh, also had been my students at CalArts. And uh, again, brilliant uh, uh, young scholars. Uh, many people that go into art school uh, continue in the arts, but some go on to medical school, become scientists, become other important uh, people in society. Uh, Cal Arts is very unique in, the, in producing people that go out and change the world. So, um, and uh, here, um, uh, here's my current project, um, Cruzada's Intuition. Uh, this is sort of an ongoing project at this point. Um, and here, again, uh, sort of a, a response to this is um, um, people are from different parts of the world. Um, the idea is that it's kind of very film noir uh, kind of effect. Um, uh, here we have Juan Garza, who, are, who appeared in some early OSCO projects, also part of this project. Here um, we have other people participating in this. And I, I do apologize to my performers for not being able to list everyone's names, but I do credit everyone whenever images are, are reproduced in print and, and online. Um, but uh, here I have people uh, doing things, responding. Um, there will be a narrative that goes with this, and it's all about the hallucinations of the woman wearing uh, the purse, who uh, in, in her bag are the secrets of the punk rock era of East LA, which probably might have uh, portraits of, of the former bands, the Brat, Odd Squad, um, the Undertakers, and maybe even Los Illegals, as well as other uh, kinds of uh, tidbits of information that have not yet been released to academia. So, and, uh, and, and again here, um, uh, uh, this is also connected to this. These images are actually shot in digital and actually shot in digital black and white. So, um, and, and, uh, and part of that has to do with the, the difficulty in being able to print um, uh, works in an analog fashion. It, it's, uh, it's actually chemistry. Uh, uh, the whole market changed the availability of people able to uh, do this. And so um, I've, I've had to actually adapt uh, to what's available. And so, and so here I'm gonna end with this. Um, uh, for, for 
nearly 10 years I was teaching in Europe. I have actually lectured at the Royal Academy of Art in Antwerp in Belgium. I, this last week, I gave a lecture online uh, for the Royal College of Art in London. I've also done things at the University in Stockholm, as well as um, different places, and particularly in Marseille, France, and a few other places, uh, as well as in uh, as, as well as in UNAM, also in Mexico City. I also, I always go into different uh, 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 urban areas of, uh, in different countries, and I will gather performers there in which we will perform in, in reaction or in uh, interpretation of their environment. And here, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, I had been to Belgium shortly after a major uh, bombing at the airport. And, uh, and because they have uh, nuclear facilities, they were handing out uh, iodine pills um, uh, to some members of the population there. And uh, again, the threat, uh, the threat that looms today, for instance, a threat of a nuclear war, which I, I don't feel will actually take place, but has been very present uh, actually since the day of my birth. I was born in, uh, uh, when the first hydrogen bomb was exploded. I was also born on Dia de los Muertos, so I'm uh, I had a pretty good start uh, to, to keep going. I had a good launch pad, uh, but um, I decided that uh, I would, uh, uh, and I was actually teaching a group of scholars in a project uh, uh, run by uh, Nico Docs, who's a, a well-known artist who I met actually as a student who was in, in one of my classes at the museum school in Boston. And, and who also, uh, I, I think he attended my lecture at Harvard. Um, but I was keeping in touch with him. And so finally, when he uh, 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 wound up teaching, uh, I was given a position for a week to teach uh, an international European group um, how to perform on the streets and how to utilize performance as sort of a political act. And so we went into, um, uh, into uh, an area of, um, of Antwerp and, um, and I explained uh, uh, that, uh, the fear of identity and what do you do in a, in a society uh, that judges you based on facial recognition and, and the punishment, the ultimate punishment is a nuclear blast. And so I had everyone pose um, ready to be photographed and this was a reaction, of course I directed this. Um, and, uh, and we were able to perform and I had hundreds of people doing this throughout Antwerp until uh, the soldiers arrived and we had to break it all up. Oh my gosh. So anyway, I do want to thank um, all, all of my performers from 1972 to the present. And of course, um, everyone who's played a role in making any of this possible. So here, let's see, we can escape this here. So, and then I will exit here. Harry, okay. thank you, thank yeah, you yeah. so much. I mean, incredible. You know, it's 50 years worth of, of your work in, in uh, breaking barriers, uh, uh, creating new forms of art. This is uh, probably your pioneer in, in many ways. And you continue to, to stretch your creativity. And I admire the way you're able to bring people together in telling these stories. Um, I don't have any questions. I'm just still in awe over, over what you presented here. Let me read uh, uh, Joe Gless. He, he writes on Facebook, I appreciate the way you, Harry Gamboa, and other artists have pushed back against incomplete and biased portrayals of our community in your acts of creation. In one tableau after another, you and others capture in carefully planned camera snapshots an image we are so hardwired to respond to visual stimuli that encapsulates an intent to respond, ridicule, and question, repudiate, repudiate stereotypes that portray us unfairly. To create is to build new su possibilities. Saludos from a Chicano in Riverside, California. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Joe. No, we've, uh, I mean, you got, we have uh, uh, Frank Caldera Jr. saying fantastic. George Mesa is asking, what are you up to next, Terry? Um, you know, I'm, um... Again, currently we're, uh, you know, I've been interviewed on this film project, for instance. Um, I'm not involved at all in direction or producing at all. So I uh, can only tell my stories and just 
kind of wondering where it's all going, but it's all, uh, you know, as, as I mentioned before, I'm, uh, um, I've learned over time um, the, the version that I was in 21 at the age of in my 30s and my 40s that all have, um, were all accurate for that era. And at this point, I'm 70 years old. So I'm, I'm able to retell and, uh, and of course my retelling uh, has to be compared with other people's retelling. So, um, and we'll see, we'll see what it is in memory, uh, you know, and, uh, and I guess maybe one of the things that I might have the benefit is I remember, but I also have the pictures to prove it. So you sure do. You, you got you have plenty of pictures to prove yeah, it. Yeah. And well, so uh, that, that's something, you know. Good. Well, Le Leda Ramos is asking on Facebook, what are your thoughts about uh, the Diego Luna production to represent Osco? Uh, you know, you are being interviewed, as you say, you, you don't know which direction they're taking it. What are you really hoping, what are you hoping that the, that the production? Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm a, I must mention, I was previously portrayed in a film about the walkouts and no one ever actually asked my permission. And I felt that my role was denigrated as the way it was portrayed. And it's a long story, but, um, you know, I survived that. And, uh, and in fact, the, the tale of the walkouts, is such a light L-I-T-E version of it, it was a very dangerous moment uh, for everyone involved. Uh, it was actually a life or death moment. Uh, it's very hard to kind of explain life or death experiences um, um, growing up in East LA during that particular era. Uh, it's kind of just, uh, it, I don't, it, it, there's, it, there's really no comparison with the way things operate now. Right now, it's still, everything is pretty harsh. However, um, again, as, as my role as an instructor, as an older person now, I really encourage young people to learn, to study, to be sharp, uh, to be aware, um, to remain peaceful, uh, and uh, and to and to understand their role and and the importance of being able to secure some element of uh, of being able to generate income, uh, and uh, and to understand that their role um, needs to be constantly. Um, uh, 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 worked on and so it, it, it's it's kind of a life lifelong learning is is, is really required uh, and and being able to um, uh, participate in, in such a way that you'll 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 be in control and you just got to make sure that no one stops you along the way all right well we have a uh, similar questions on both zoom and on, on on Facebook what advice do you have for the new generation of Chicano artists and on, on Zoom, Esperanza Sanchez is asking, what advice do you provide to your students or upcoming artists who are pursuing the career uh, in the arts? Well, you know, I, I think one of the things is that, uh, again, and, and uh, Abelardo, I know that you've met some of the various artists, but, you know, early on, I literally had absolutely nothing. And, but with that came also nothing to lose. And, uh, and so the idea was, uh, um, and, and of course the response to having nothing and nothing to lose could be the fear uh, to absolutely make sure that nothing else will happen to you. Uh, but of course, if you're risk averse in such a, a, a damaged situation, it, it will be very difficult to succeed. So you must actually uh, consider risk to be part of the equation. Uh, you must be willing to go forward. You, you can't expect to know what the answer is gonna be. And in fact, you cannot always expect that success is always going to follow. So, you know, I, my, my failures uh, have been so public since I've been 15 years old. I mean, you can just go to the online and look them all up. Uh, but so have also things, have, uh, things that at one point might have been considered a failure, then at some future point get rewritten as something else. And so then, uh, uh, but I do uh, recommend for my students to really to expand and, and enhance their vocabulary. Um, uh, of course, I, I have taught English, but um, but nonetheless, irregardless of what language you speak, you should have a very elaborate control of a broadened uh, uh, spectrum of your language. Uh, and if you are going to be speaking English, you need to know the various uh, idiosyncrasies of the English language as spoken by Americans because it's all code. And if you're left out of this code, you're left out of the conversation. And so, um, and, and, and the thing also to understand if you're talking about uh, economic movements, it's really important to understand the function and how it operates uh, because otherwise, uh, uh, you know, if, if everyone really understood it, we would not live in a country 
uh, that doesn't provide health care, that doesn't provide uh, care for uh, children, that, uh, that actually, I think it was just announced that two thirds of the, of the budget is going to go to the military, which leaves us all with one third. And those that are underserved, uh, what portion of that one third will we all get? Which is absolutely, you know, nothing. And so, and, and we live in Southern California, where the um, mega rich uh, populate. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we could see the opposite. And the thing is, uh, and you'll notice, of course, in, in a city where um, there's so many harsh things happening, uh, Chicanos have a different response to poverty. And it's usually um, uh, we go to work and we work harder and uh, we take care of each other. And, uh, and, and we persist. Um, and one of the reasons we persist is that we've been here for 40,000 years. We're yeah. not going anywhere. No, we're not going anywhere. And, and we're here today, we're here this evening. We're here with so many people that, that joined us. Uh, just gonna name off a few. Erin Zadroni, Zadrozny, uh, she says, hi, Harry, Nicolas Trejo. Good evening to you and Professor Gamboa, former CSN student here, Nicolas Trejo. Uh, Sang Jun Lee, oh. Sang Jun Lee joining us from uh, from South Korea. Yeah, yeah, good, 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 brilliant writer, by the way. Brilliant we have a uh, Glugio Grant Nicandro. Hello from South Central LA. Adriel Delum from Occidental College. Uh, Adrien Arien Roche from Houston. Yes, uh, Ariana. Terco, yeah, yes, Terco yes. Chicano. Uh, he's here. He was part honored to be part of the Chicago Mail Unbounded series. Gracias La Plaza for this excellent event. Well, you're welcome, Terco. And Frank Caldera Jr. asking, I grew up on Whittier in Arizona. Do you still visit your old neighborhood? Has it progressed or degenerated? Um, you know, I think almost all of Los Angeles on some level really does need a makeover. And, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it really does require uh, everyone. I, I do every once in a while go back to East LA and Boyle Heights. And in fact, I teach a course at CalArts where all we do is walk. And every single year I take um, 20 to 100 people walking. We, we've walked every square inch of East LA and Boyle Heights every year. So I take people that come from all parts of the world and, um, and they will see what I've seen. And, uh, and, and every once in a while, I might even go take them to, to the, the burial spot of my father who would have probably really enjoyed them because he loved children and he particularly loved his grandchildren. Um, and so, um, uh, and so uh, uh, you know, I, I do um, uh, make sure that I honor the sites of uh, uh, those places that were important to me and uh, in the memory of those that, um, that uh, people who I knew that are no longer around. All right. Well, Harry, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, thanks all of you out there that joined us as well on, on Zoom, uh, Facebook. We recorded this. We'll be uh, 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 for posterity. It'll be on our YouTube site at La Plaza LA, on our Facebook site at La Plaza LA, also on our website, lapca.org, along with the 200 plus other sessions that we've been conducting here on En Casa con La Plaza. Uh, great conversations uh, and presentations like Harry just uh, presented to us tonight. Uh, uh, and, and more to come. Uh, we're, we're live, of course, we have our exhibition open, LA Memo, Chicana Chicano Arts, 1972-1989. Uh, you're all welcome to come in and, and join us there. Uh, we're open uh, six days out of the week and it's free of charge, free admission. Uh, thank you to Margaret Garcia for joining us, Margaret Arnold, all of you, just to let you know what's coming up on En Casa Con La Plaza, we're going to take this Friday off. Uh, we usually have a, a, a session on Friday, but uh, it's, Friday is uh, our, our CEO, John Echevestes, uh, last day as CEO. He is uh, going to have a, a, a retirement uh, coming up, going to be relaxing after so many years of, of putting a, a lot of effort into, into bringing La Plaza to where we're at today, being able to present programs like this online, virtual programs, as well as on site. Um, and then this this Saturday, we do have the, a memorial service for Congressman Esteban uh, Torres, who was uh, La Plaza's first chair of uh, the Board of Tr Trustees, one of the, the key founders of La Plaza, and he passed away uh, just this last year. And uh, so we'll be honoring him uh, there at La Plaza. You're welcome to join us, but please let us know you're coming by RSVPing at LAPCA.org. So we have a uh, room for you to uh, to have a, a place there at La Plaza. Um, 
Again, thank you, Harry. Uh, next week, we have our cooking demonstration on Monday. We have a talk with uh, Yolanda Nava with, uh, with Herman uh, Gallegos on Wednesday. And then Dan Guerrero returns with uh, Luis Alfaro, the playwright and poet. So that'll be on Dan Guerrero's happy hour at seven o'clock next Friday. So with that, thanks to our sponsors, Union Pacific Foundation, um, let's see, Institute for Museum and Library Services. Thanks to all at La Plaza for, for keeping this going. And thank you so much, Harry. This has been inspiring. It's been uh, thought provoking and uh, you gotta come down. All of you gotta come down to LA Memo and just to uh, see for yourselves these three pieces that, that Harry has contributed uh, along with everything else that we have there. Work by Margaret Garcia, uh, 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 John Valadez, Barbara Carrasco, Diana Gamboa, and many, many more. So, buenas noches, Harry. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for coming. All have, right. a, have a good week. Bye -bye. Have a good week. Buenas noches a todos. Bye-bye.